Josh, my man. What's happening today, Boston? Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How you doing, my, my friend? I'm doing great. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview. Oh, sure. No problem. Um, my pleasure. Anything to help this charity out. That's, that's what we're going for here. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. My, my pleasure. My pleasure, my friend. Oh, likewise here. And it, again, you know, just for such a great cause and such a great EP that's going to be coming out next Friday from Blood Division's Cardinal One. So what went into the process for writing this new EP? Okay. Uh, we actually, I'll, I'll, I'm, and I'm not sure if you're aware of this, we actually did one that was released August 28th of 2015, but it was, it was, it was on a smaller scale. It was kind of a, you know, I don't know if you know the history of how this started or if you want to know. I mean, we can get into that, but, uh, you know, you just, you just let me know where do you want me to kind of start as far as like how this, how the whole thing got started or, you know, just, well, just, you know, wherever you want me to, wherever you want me to get into it at. Well, I am uh, familiar with the band and uh, very happy with everything that's going with it, but I'm sure someone's going to be checking this out from Metal Blade that hasn't heard you guys before, so it'd be great to hear a little bit of the history. Sure, I'll try, I'll try to kind of give you the, you know, just uh, kind of like the Reader's Digest version, if you will, you know. Uh, this, this, this started, oh, uh, and uh, around December of 2014, I was down in Florida for a while and uh, I had contacted a friend of mine, Ed Aborn. He's, he's, he's the guy that produced uh, this Cardinal one and the first the first one that we did and he plays uh, he plays drums on one of the tracks on this one here. And he plays actually plays drums on two of the tracks. He plays drums on Hot and Ready and he plays uh, the drum tracks on Top of the Bell, the Scorpions cover that we did. But I basically called him up and I knew he had a studio and I told him, I said, man, we ought to get together and just do some covers, you know, for the hell of it. And, uh, so uh, he said, sure. So I said, let's, let's do Top of the Bell because it was kind of always on my uh, bucket list. I just, you know, it's a kind of an obscure Scorpion songs, but it's one of my favorites. You know, I'm a big fan of the old old Scorpion stuff. And uh, he said, sure, you know, sounds good. So he's uh, really, really good friends with Chris Jericho. So he called me back about 10 minutes later and he goes, he goes hey, Jericho wants to, wants to sing on it. I said, well, sure. You know, sounds good. So once that started taking place, I was like, no, why don't we do a, a cover of a, a Savage song for the hell of it, too, and I'll get my buddies, you know, to, to pitch in and do some solos and play drums. And I know all these, you know, I know I know all those guys in Obituary and, and you know, a lot of the guys that were, you know, formerly in Testament and Ice Earth and, you know, Deicide and all these bands, you know, we're all good buddies from, you know, from 30 years ago, so... <clears throat> we had, you know, I called them up and they're like, sure, yeah, it sounds like fun. So Chris got a hold of me and he goes, hey, he goes, why don't we, why don't we take this to another level? You know, he goes, I'm good friends with Brian Slagle from Metal Blade. He goes, you used to be on their label with Nasty Savage. He goes, why don't we get him involved and, and see if we can kind of take this, you know, up a notch. And I said, well, sure, you know, so... We got a hold of Brian, and uh, Brian was into it. So we we recorded uh, the morgue and top of the bill, and uh, so that eventually ended up getting released. You know, just for download only. And uh, Metal Blade said so they wanted to do another one after Chris talked to him. So then that's when we started working on these these tunes. And now the the morgue and top of the bill were on the first one. We just added it to this one because we knew it was going to be a CD release, and that way we could have you know some more material on there. And we knew this one was going to get out a little bit more to the masses than the first one did. So, okay, so after that, I kind of, just, I was kind of kind of leading the thing as far as what songs we were going to do. And Chris was kind of taking it to another level with Metal Blade and everything and talking to them. So I uh, suggested we do Hot and Ready because that's one of my favorite UFO songs ever recorded. And uh, we decided to do that and a cover of No Sympathy, which is another Nasty Savage song, our first album. And uh, there is a, there's one, there's a piece on there called Garden of, or Return to the Garden of Temptation, which is actually uh, an instrumental that I did on the very first Nasty Savage album. We kind of added some orchestration to it, you know, and, 
and did some different things with that. And then uh, we did a, a seven-minute instrumental called March of the Machine Elves, which I wrote. So that's the only uh, the only original on there is March of the Machine Elves. The other ones are all covers. So once we decided that that's what we were going to do, so that's when I started locking everybody in as far as like who's going to play what, who's going to do what solo, who's going to play the rhythms, who's going to do this, and, and then that's when I got a hold of uh, Ralph Santola, who uh, was an obituary deicide, uh, I started in a band called Devil's Highway now, and he... He basically did uh, the, the, most of the work on Hot and Ready as far as like rhythm tracks and lead guitar tracks. Now we have a couple other guys on there. Uh, Johnny Chromatic, who played with uh, Sebastian Bach for a while, and Bill Hudson, who plays with uh, trans Siberian Orchestra. So he, he knew those guys and got me in contact with them. And then, you know, and, and, you, and most of the other guys I knew. And then after that, we just kind of started working it all out. You know, I did uh, kind of like the foundation here at my house because I have, you know, like a little studio here. And we were able to, you know, I could do my rhythm tracks and send them down to Florida and, you know, with a click. And then they put the drums to it and we could send it to all these other guys and they could just put their solos in wherever I said, you know, like, yeah, here your solo parts, you know, from here to here. So that's, that's how we kind of built it all together, you know, because it's so much easier now with the technology that we have. Yeah, that's definitely the upside with technology nowadays is that you don't always have to be in the same room to be able to record. I mean, you can be from other countries, other parts of the world to be able to get mm-hmm. this all together. And it's, it's awesome to see the amount of people that were very interested to be a part of this. I mean, there's so many guests on here and they do such an exceptional job. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate that, and and yeah, I yeah, I, I definitely let them know because I mean there there's some really really good guitar work on this, and I, it just everybody was excited to do it, you know. And actually, you know, we, you know when when uh, Chris had first gotten a hold of Brian, you know, with Metal Blade. You know, once we got all these players and we knew that we were going to put it out, it was, I kind of had an idea of, you know, instead of when we put this out, you know, because you, you never know, like if an ego is going to get involved, you know, well, they're putting it out on Metal Blade, should I, I need to get paid for blah, 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 which I didn't think was going to happen, but I solved that problem. I said, let's just do it all for charity, you know, and that's how, that's how the charity thing came about, you know, so now, now it's all about, you know, basically having fun, putting a, some good music out, man. Uh, and 100% of it goes to charity. So. And uh, go into detail a bit about how it came about uh, to pick the charity that it's going to. Well, the, the first the first go around, half of it went to Rock and Rescue, which uh, uh, finds homes for dogs. And the other half went to the Warren County Humane Society, where I live in Tennessee. My half did. So this time around, we just decided just to, just to basically go with one charity. Now there was a couple of charities that I had in mind that I've got that I got a hold of that were like Children's Cancer in Tampa and and some other children's cancer organizations, and they kind of had a meeting about it and backed out because there are so many bands on there that are just their names are DSI you know, and obituary and all this kind of stuff. And they didn't really like the way that fits with <laughs> with what they do. You know, it's just one of those things, you know, kind of politics, I guess. So that's, well, that's why we're just kind of stuck with Rock and Rescue. You know, the, the, and then there was no issues. So that's, that's kind of how that came about. Well, at least with that, I mean, as, as sad as it is, it's not uh, able to go with the charities to help with the children's hospitals. At least it's getting some good funding for uh, the animals as well, because that's always a no cause to go for oh sure yeah yeah and yeah everybody was you know everybody was down for that you know and it's like you know these guys that are involved they're they're just they're so easy to work with you know and i got some you know if we get to do another one which i hope we do uh yeah i got some some guys lined up you know that are uh, a little bit bigger names I, i'm not going to mention them now but uh but they're 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 ready to come on board if we do another one so but that's kind of how the the rock and rescue that was, that was something that uh i think metal blade had donated to before so they were already kind of set up with them so it kind of just kind of made it easy oh very much so and again you know when you get all these great musicians i mean ones that are previously a part of it and ones that are coming up in the future 
you know, it's it's great to see it all for a great cause and doing some great covers. And that instrumental track is definitely one that sticks out to me a lot because I love the direction of it. And it, it's awesome to see that the intentions are for a next release already in mind. Well, that's, that's in my head. And, you know, and Ed, Ed, Ed Aborn, the guy that, you know, produced us and played, played on some drum tracks. And, you know, Chris Jericho, he'll, he'll be into it, you know. So it's just a matter of let, let's see how this goes. You know, let's, let's see how well it does and, you know, and see if it's feasible to do another one, you know, because there is cost involved and things like that. So we'll just have to kind of, we'll let, we'll let this one come out and, and uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I got plenty of stuff coming up with Nasty Savage to keep me busy. So, so besides that, you know, uh, you know, once once we get, once this comes out and everything, we'll just kind of we'll kind of take it from there. Yeah, and I was I was just about to ask about that too because I I saw that Nasty Savage is uh, back again, and that is such a great timing here in 2017. What are the current plans going on right now? Right now, we are uh, basically just we're not really pimping ourselves out for gigs. We, we're, we, every people, there are people know that we are together and we're willing to do shows. We're not writing it, writing anything right now. We have enough material to do, you know, you know, any kind of a, you know, any kind of a lengthy set that we need to do. We got plenty of material. So there's a, uh, we started getting the interest in our band again. So we just, actually, we just came back from Germany uh, a few weeks ago and did a headline to festival out there. And, uh, we have a show coming up June 16th for the Defenders of the Old Fest in New York and Brooklyn. And we're headlining that festival too. And we have a guy working on, I think, nine shows in South America toward the end of the summer. So we're, we're, we're kind of, I'm able to do, I'm able to do this and keep my job at the same time. So that's why we're, you know, we can't really go on a full-fledged tour. You know, it's just, I have kids, I have a job, so, you know, I, I'm able to do these when I can. So, and we're, I'm just trying to, trying to work those things. And that makes those shows so much more special when you are able to make those happen. I mean, with all those great festival appearances and, like, being able to travel around the world and still be able to keep work going keep your family going i mean that's awesome to see oh yeah it's like you know i mean i'm 54 years old and if i get a chance to go to ecuador and paraguay and peru and all those places i mean what's the chances of that happening if i don't do it nasty savage probably zero so you know i'll take advantage of it you know while i can and you know we're having a good time doing it and we, have, we actually have a lot of fans down there in South America. It's been a long time since we've been there, and uh, there's there's a lot of interest in us doing like a you know like a ten like a ten day tour, you know, doing eight or nine shows and in like a ten day span down there. So hopefully that works out and comes together. You now, one thing I wanted to say, I, I really appreciate the fact that you like that instrumental because I really busted my ass on that one. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like, I think it's a good centerpiece for the EP because, you know, it's just like it shows off so much of what is possible with instrumentation. And, you know, it's great to see all the different styles that are showing off on there, all all the movements that are together. I mean, like, instrumental music is sometimes give or take when it comes to more of the metal and hard rock side. So when someone's really into instrumental music, you can pick it apart. But with this, it's just like it's so well done. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I like the way that came out. You know, the, there's a nice uh, bridge section in there that has you know a lot of keyboards and and that kind of thing. That kind of kind of you know blends it from you know from one section to another. Kind of a kind of gets a little heavier at the end of it. But uh, I like Ed did that. And he's he's just very very good at that kind of stuff. And he he did a nice piece right there to kind of bridge the whole thing together and. It, you know, it's got kind of a funky, odd start to it, which I was kind of like, I was kind of worried about that a little bit just because of, uh, you know, you're going to get people, you know, that are, oh, this isn't even, you know, David Austin, Nasty Savage is playing this. It's not even really that heavy, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. I like it. You know, I thought it, I thought it it's kind of quirky. And it, uh, it just, the way that it builds and just, uh, I love it. I'm real, really, really proud of that. Yeah, and as you should be, along with the entire EP. But it's great to see brand new material coming from you now with this EP. And, you know, it's just like showing all the talent that you have going on right now. And I imagine in the future that will continue to shine through. Oh, yeah. Well, let's hope so. You know, so, so that's what we're probably, 
you know, if we do another one, I'll probably, I'll probably start writing another instrumental. You know, if, if you know, we'll see how this is accepted. And you know, I got some idea for ideas for some cover songs. You know, and we'll probably stay away from the nasty savage stuff on the next one. But you know, I got some ideas for some covers on the next one that would be pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing seeing the reviews and that type of thing. You know, and uh, hopefully it's well accepted. And, and people just, you know, the, the main thing they need to keep in mind is we're not getting paid for this. So, you know, it, it's it's 100% for charity and uh, a lot of a lot of good guys took time out of their busy schedule to do it, you know. And, you know, it, 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 they know how, you know, much I appreciate it. So, yeah, I'm real happy about it. Oh, absolutely. And it, again, with such a great cause, getting all these great people together to do some great covers and some great original music. I mean, it's awesome to see in 2017 that all these people can get together and just make some great music. Yeah, I mean, it's one one lesson that I, all, that I always try to tell people is just, you know, be nice to each other down the road. Don't burn bridges. You know, stay in touch with each other, communicate, and, you know, then later on down the road, you can get everybody together like this. It's not easy. So, you know, I was able to stay friends with these people and stay in touch with them over, you know, 35 years I've known some of these people. I've known Terry Butler from Obituary since he was a kid, you know. And uh, this is somebody that I talk to on a regular basis, and he is... This, he, he can't wait to record another one, you know. So, yeah, everybody's into it. Maybe next time we can shoot a video or something like that if we can get a little bit more in the budget or whatever. And, yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there. Oh, awesome. But, um, of course, so to continue on with this EP, I see that there's going to be a really cool listening party coming up in April. Yeah, April 22nd at the... Uh, it's the uh, Gas Bars Patio and Grill uh, down in Temple Terrace, Florida. And uh, I am, we're going to get, Metal Blade's going to send us 40 or 50 CDs down there, and, and we'll take like a $10 donation, minimum donation for each CD. That way the people that come, you know, they can walk away with something. And, you know, it'll be like a little meet and greet. You know, there's going to be, everybody can't make it because some people are on tour and that kind of thing. But, uh, I think the majority of the people involved in Blood Division are going to be there. I don't know about Chris Jericho, because he's that dude's just all over the place all the time. So, you know, I, I don't know if he's going to be able to make it or not. But, no, yeah, we'll see. So, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll be fun. Yeah, and, and again, you know, it's just, it's for a great cause, and it's great to be able to see that a physical release would be at the show as well. I mean, I know so much music is digital nowadays, but it's, again, you know, just for a $10 donation to be able to get a listening party and be able to get a physical copy of the album, that is so cool. Right. Yeah, and actually, uh, Metal Blade sent Jericho 500 inserts, and he signed 500 of them and sent them back to Metal Blade. So it'll be 500 of them, you know, that he signed, which is very cool, you know, on Chris's part to take his time to do that. You know, that's that's definitely much appreciated. He's a, he's a, a lot of people know how, you know, so that, that, that helps big time. Yeah, I, I really... I really owe a lot to him, you know, for, for really, he, he, he was a big Savage fan when he was 16 or 17, you know, and that's what kind of gravitated us all together, you know, because he, he was a big fan when he was growing up in Canada. So that's, that's what kind of got him involved in this, and he kind of took, and he, you know, he took it to another level, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. I'm, I'm thrilled, I'm ecstatic about it, you know. It is, the production just came out great, and, uh, the sounds really good, and, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really stoked. Oh, yeah, and likewise here, I mean, it was, it was such an honor to be able to get the EP and release, uh, as a promo to be able to check out everything that's going on with it. I mean, again, the covers are exceptional, uh, March of the Machine. Else is a fantastic instrumental. I just love everything from start to finish on this. And again, with such a great cause and all these great people taking their time to be able to do it. I mean, Jericho alone with how busy he is with his entire life, being able to take the time to be able to do this. And right, just, yeah, and he did he did a good job too. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's just like all the guys, and of course yourself. I mean, with your amazing playing and songwriting. I mean, it's it's great to see everything coming together for again for such a great cause and for a great EP, Cardinal One, coming out this Friday, uh, next Friday through Metal Blade. 
Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really glad you like it. It makes me feel good. Because, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, we're gonna, we'll get some reviews that are, you know, not so good. That, that always happens, but, you know, I've been through that, you know, my whole life, so it, it's okay. But, you know, I'm, I'm really glad you like it. I, 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 for me, I just can't see what there's not to like about it. <laughs> but, of course, you know, I'm biased, so. <laughs> Oh, sure. And, you know, just uh, from a fan perspective and, uh, well, of course, uh, being able to do interviews and journalism like that, I see it as a bunch of great musicians playing some great music for a great cause. I mean, that's there's nothing there you can't support. Sure, yeah. yeah it, it, you know, people always ask me, you know, oh, you guys ought to get together and play. You know, well, it's kind of hard to get 14 people, you know, <laughs> to, that are involved. Yeah, it's just too difficult, especially something like, you know, March of the Machine Elves would be that'll that'll be very very difficult to play live. You know, there's a lot of work went into that. It'll it would be, you know, because some of these guys, like the guy that uh, the guy that played bass on that, John Ferranza, which is just a long long time friend of mine, and he's an extraordinary bass player. And uh, you know, he lives in Kentucky. You know, I live in Tennessee. You got some guys that live in Florida. You got Bill Hudson. That's you know, he's he's touring. You know, quite a bit. You know, either with Trans Siberian or just or I think he's doing like a morbid angel thing right now and doing some other things. So it's kind of, it's difficult to get all these people together, you know, and, and something like that would have to be rehearsed well and all that. So we're just, you know, we're, we're putting it out there and, and, and that's, that's really the best we can do is just put it out, you know, as far as like playing any kind of shows or anything like that, I don't see that happening. Well, again, with that, I'm, I'm so honored that you took the time to be able to uh, do this interview, to be able to help promote everything that's going on with Blood Divisions. And, of course, with the brand new EP coming out next Friday through Metal Blade. Uh, I can't thank you for taking the time to do this. Hey, I, I really appreciate you calling me and taking the time to do the interview. So, you know, I appreciate it as much as you do. 